I've been talking about getting some little plecos, either two smaller plecos or even like a bigger pleco for uh, you know, the goldfish slash turtle pond. And that's just because there's been a lot of algae going on in there. And the goldfish really do help with it. What is that? With it. There's just a lot of stuff in there that uh, they're not eating. Them. There's just so much like stuff that cre gets created from them and also the turtles. So what we did today is actually went and picked up two probably four to five inch plecos right there. And uh, these guys are going to do a lot of growing here because there's a lot of things for them to eat. I'm really not even going to feed these guys unless I just see really a lack of food in here. I'll drop some little algae, algae pellets in here or whatever. But anyways, I'm going to go and activate these guys right now. Uh, all the goldfish in here are doing great. Also the turtles. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's a few mosquito fish in here as well. But yep, they're all doing great. There's just a lot of gunk on the bottom that uh, these guys can really be helping out with. And uh, you know, you don't really do water changes on the pond. You just kind of do it. Kind of clean the pond out, you know, every few months or so, but uh, it's not like a tank, so that's why we need something in here really to help keep maintaining the pond. But anyways, while those guys are acclimating, this turtle tank right here. So a few weeks ago, I actually moved the two turtles that were in here into the turtle cooler because they were really kind of outgrowing this. So they're now in there, you know, going to grow up there and then eventually go into the goldfish pond. But anyways, this tank is now empty. There's nothing in here. It's 20 long, and uh, we're going to put some type of turtle in here. I'm gonna, I've narrowed it down to three different choices, and. Um, I'm gonna call them out right now, and whichever one that you guys want me to get for this tank, comment it down below. So the first one is a pink belly side neck turtle, and keep in mind that all these are gonna be baby turtles. They're only gonna be about the size of that guy right there. That guy, so uh, yeah. Maybe even a little bit smaller, and then of course they'll grow up in here and then go into something much bigger, of course. Comment snapping turtle, or an albino radiator slider. So one of those three, comment which one you want me to see, get down below, and uh, of course they'll be pretty small. And I might even get two. I don't know, I might even get two. But uh, it'll definitely be one, and it'll go in here, be all by itself, and uh, of course we'll raise it up in here, and we'll go into something much bigger. So the soft shell turtle tank, so of course we do have the one soft shell in here, he's pretty used to me, he's actually basking right now, most of my turtles when they're basking, I can't really be right by them, because they'll actually hop right off, but that guy's really, really used to me, which is really, really good. And we're going to get at least one more soft shell to go in here, and of course they're going to outgrow this and all that, but the musk turtle that was in here, I went ahead and just released that guy, uh, releasing him into my big pond down there. And uh, this is just going to be, you know, a strictly soft shell tank. That was the plan in the beginning anyway. Here's the gar right there, and I'm about to go back on another trip. So, like I've been doing, I went to the store today, picked up two dozen rows of red minnows right there. We're going to go and drop these guys on in here. And you kind of have something to eat all throughout the week, or really just for the few days that I'm going. And also the Marlboro Car catfish that is in here, that guy's been getting really big. You don't really see him all that much, because a lot of times I come over here, uh, put a little cut piece of like a shrimp or tilapia in here and I uh, just leave because uh, it takes them a few minutes to come out in the daytime at night you know they're not turtle feeders so of course you do a lot of swimming and you know really out from the rock formation at night but I don't really see that guy much so I just wanted to see him yesterday lift it up that rock and uh, that guy is getting getting pretty decent size here we'll actually try to lift it up right now and let's see if we can see him he's probably gonna come out from over there oh oh there he yeah. is right there so that guy has been getting much bigger, of course. And I'm gonna set his rock right back. There's a guard right there. So we're gonna go and drop uh, these two dozen rows of resin here. I'm not gonna pour the water in there, of course. But also, we're still gonna be getting more fish for this. Probably two uh, medium size, about that big, albino Oscars. And also even gonna be ordering uh, probably about a six to seven inch peacock bass as well. So this thing's gonna be pretty cool when we're you know, completely finished with it. Two dozen of them right there. He's not really one to go and really, like, really chase after him. He kind of lets them come to him. You know, a lot of times the guard or down the water, they're like a stick almost, and they're just sitting there. And uh, we'll, we'll let this one that's going right along. And uh, so they'll come right up against him, and right when they do that, he just ambushes them. And it's pretty cool to watch, but you really got to be looking and watching him for a few seconds to see it happen. Oh, oh, he's probably going to get one. So, anyways, that guy's got uh, close to about two and a half dozen because there was a few left in here. And uh, those are, of course, enough for him for about three days or so. All right, so it's about time now. It's been about 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, we're going to go and put these plecos right on in here. Like I said, these guys are going to do a lot of growing in here. That guy's a little bit bigger, uh, which is pretty common when you get them the same size. And they just sell them as the same size, usually one that's a little bit bigger. But anyways, these guys are going to do great in here. There are plenty of things in here for them to eat. All right, so we got both of them right here. And I'm just going to dump them right in. And there they go. And uh, they might be a little bit hard to spot. Hang on, there's a glare. They might be a little bit hard to spot, but uh, of course when there's a glare on the pond, but that is one of them right there. And there are just so many things, so much stuff in here for them to eat. 
And uh, yeah, these guys are going to do great in here. So here's the Betas tank, of course. Not last video, but the video before last, we actually put this bonsai tree in here. It's looking really, really good. Just got to add a little bit more water, but I'm actually about to do uh, a little bit of 50% water change on this because uh, it's releasing just a little bit of tannins, but there were also some tannins already in here from uh, that piece of wood, which... Puffer tank is looking great as well with the wood that was in the betas tank and also the two little subulata plants and there he is right back there just chilling and like I've been saying we are still going to get one more pea puffer in here but uh yeah I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the betas tank and the fish are just loving the bonsai tree and uh, I just love the light as well. Quick update on the butterfly fish this guy is doing great he is looking really really good he's been getting very used to me and just check this out so uh, he's actually pretty well trained on these Hikari cichlid pellets. The same thing that I feed the Jack Dempsey. Look at this guy. Watch him. Watch him. Look at that. Got it. I've been feeding him two, and I've just now started to feed him three of them. So we eat that one. I'll let him eat it, and then he'll come right back out. And then put the second one in. Oh, oh, oh. There he goes. Got it. And, uh, yep, that guy's really been doing a lot of eating, and he's looking great. Got two bloodworm cubes right here for these guys. These guys are about to chow down on this. Alright, just drop them right on in and just look at them go. They just go and tear them apart. And uh, once one cube or like two of them start to get closer to the bottom, you'll see the leaf fish down there in his cave. They'll start to kind of come out. And uh, that guy will go up and just take the whole cube from the whichever fish has got it. Because a lot of them, they'll take it and kind of run off with it. And then another one will get it. And then another one will get it. And then all of a sudden, the leaf fish will come out and just pluck it from all of them. But... Yeah, look at them. They're just tearing all those bloodworms apart. And they'll still be hungry after both of those cubes. And these are the little bloodworms. There's a lot more in these cubes uh, compared to the bigger bloodworm cubes. And uh, they'll still be hungry after all this. But, yeah, they're just tearing it apart. It's usually the, the uh, two electric blue jack dempsies that really start tearing them apart. And then the other ones start going after them. But, those, oh, here comes the leaf fish. Look at him. Oh, he's coming up here. Look at that. He'll take that and he, nobody's going to steal that from him. That is what that guy does best. Just goes up and just steals the whole cube. Look at Jake Dempsey's pecking it from him, but they're not going to be able to steal that from him. And as you can see, there's just uh, a few more bloodworms floating around, but both of those cubes are pretty much gone now. Yep, leaf fish just swallowed the whole cube just about, and uh, those guys just, just absolutely tear them up every morning. Just take some of these small little cichlid pellets right here, and then just drop them right on in. And uh, I drop a little bit of extra from what they'll actually eat, so it gets down to the bottom and the Cynodonis cats come out and eat it. And then I drop a few veggie pellets in for the three plecos in here, so everybody gets fed. But yeah, that big Cynodonis will come out and start getting all those. And the two other little newer, smaller ones, there's one right there, they'll both come out and start getting the rest of them. Here comes one of them. They just smell it and they just start going crazy. Oh, there they are. Look at them. Look at them go. One's a little bit bigger than the other one, but yeah. One of them, I think, is already doing some growing, but you can see definitely the size comparison. But there's no, I mean, there's no, like, bullying, I guess you would say, that goes on in here between the big Cynodonis and the other little ones. I mean, they all get along really, really good, so that's, that's very, very good. As you can see, all those pellets are gone, so I want to do is I'll drop a little bit more in there, drop them right on in. The cichlids will kind of get them, and uh, the ones they don't get, of course, get to the bottom. Hang on, that was not enough. Drop them right on in, and that right there should be... Should be just about enough. The cichlids will try to get these. Sometimes they'll get one of the smaller ones, especially the bigger dragon blood. And the Cynodonis do eat these as well. So everybody in this tank definitely gets fed well. Even, you know, the cleanup crew, I guess you would say. The saltwater tank, there's the one lonely clownfish now in the Royal Grama and cleaner shrimp right there. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're doing great. They really are. But pretty soon we are going to go get another clownfish. Uh, if you haven't watched the video I posted last video, one of the clownfish actually jumped out uh, back into the filter box, and uh, unfortunately, I did not come out here in time, and he was dead. But, yeah, I mean, they, they're doing great. They really are, so that's good. Pretty soon, we are going to get another clownfish for this. So, if you have any ideas for, as to what type of clownfish you think I should get for this tank along with other clownfish, comment it down below. That is pretty much it for now, though. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We got two new plecos, you know, pretty decent algae eaters for, you know, the outside pond and all that. And uh, they should do great in there. They're really going to help clean up that pond. And uh, they're, they're going to do a lot of growth in there for sure. I mean, just look at all the other fish in there. I might do a video showing you guys how big the freaking mosquito fish are in there. At least, like, the OG mosquito fish. Like, the ones that have been in there for, like, 
the first ever mosquito fish that I've put in the pond. They're freaking huge. Like, I pulled two of them out of the pond, like, a few days ago, and they are huge. Like, huge, huge. So, I might do a video on that. But anyways, with that being said, you guys, I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.